Today's video is covering automatic transfer switches, how they work and how to wire them for a solar power system. And this is an RV specific 30 amp automatic transfer switch. And a lot of people are intimidated when they open these up and it looks pretty crazy. And when they have an RV and they have a converter box and they have a shore power plug, they just do not understand how solar power can power everything in their RV. They do not understand how to connect the solar power inverter or the AC producing part of their system to their AC distribution panel of their converter box in their RV. So 99% of RVs will have a converter box and this has a battery charger so that you can charge your batteries when you're connected to shore power. It also has a DC distribution panel to power the lights off of the house or the coach battery. And then you also have AC circuit breaker spot right here. And when you buy an RV, it typically has a couple of them built in. So this connects to your house battery and to shore power. And this is shore power. So this goes straight to here. What the automatic transfer switch does is goes between the shore power plug and the converter box. All right, and we're gonna learn how to wire that up. And then you connect your solar power system inverter AC output straight to this thing. And it automatically diverts power from your solar power system inverter or from grid power. So when shore power is available, it will also charge up your solar power batteries. So all this does is switches power from grid or from solar. Very simple. And after thinking about it for some time, I've noticed that the transfer switch is very easy to install, but the hard part is knowing how to wire it in to the converter box, because this is usually mounted in the RV and every single RV is very different. If I showed you guys the installation procedure for my RV, you would probably be very confused with your own RV. So what you're gonna have to do, and this is probably the most difficult part, is take this apart and pull it out. What you wanna find is where the shore power plug goes into the converter box because that cable that goes out and plugs into shore power, you're going to wanna to splice into it and put this in between the converter box and the power plug. And so now I've taken off the cover of the converter box. We have the DC distribution panel, then we have the AC distribution panel with the RV power plug connection. So I just added some crimp connectors and I put the ground and the neutral in here. You don't have to do this. If your RV comes with a converter box, do not take any of this off, do not touch this. All I want you guys to know is that there's a big cable coming out the back that should look like this, it's probably black, and you can follow it all the way out to your RV power plug where you plug into shore power. Now that you guys understand that there is a lot of variation in each RV, we're actually gonna take apart my converter box. So what you wanna do is remove this, and we wanna get to that power cable I keep talking about that goes to shore power. So you see a bunch of screws, we just need to remove all of these. And before you mess with this, you wanna disconnect the battery and you wanna disconnect any shore power or any inverters, turn everything off. And after you pull the screws, you can pull the converter box out of the wall. And on this side, we have DC circuit wires. And on this side, we have AC circuit wires and a chassis ground, this copper solid core wire. And we also on top have an automatic line generator switch. So this is an automatic transfer switch for when your generator turns on. It will disable the shore power and power everything with the generator. And you can actually connect this to your solar power system inverter. So find the wire that goes out to the generator and instead of connecting it to the generator, if you don't use the generator or you have it removed, then you can connect that cable directly to your solar power system inverter. If not, and you do not have one of these, you're gonna wanna find out which cable goes out to the power plug for shore power. And usually it's in the back, but look at the variation. It's not like the converter box that I have at home in our demonstration system. So it really depends on what your converter box looks like in the back, and there can be quite a bit of variation. And these wires down here are the AC wires that go out to all the receptacles. And then on the back here, we have the ground and the positive wires for DC. And then these main battery cables go out to your house battery. But let's imagine for a second, I wanna connect an automatic transfer switch and this is not here. There is not much room back here to put an automatic transfer switch. We have a duct, 
we have other wires. I mean, it is pretty cramped. So what you might wanna do is find the RV shore power cable and follow it around your RV and find a spot that you can put the automatic transfer switch where you can easily connect it to your solar power system. And that can be very difficult. And even though there's not much space behind there, I can actually find space over here. So this is the perfect place to put an automatic transfer switch. It's very close to the converter box and the RV shore power plug goes by this area. So if you can find that cable and wire it through here and put an automatic transfer switch box in here, you are good to go. Another difficulty is we do not have my shore power plug going directly into any of these boxes. So you might have to find out how they're labeled. Usually these are labeled. There's some labels on here and you have to figure out which one actually goes out to your shore power. Usually it will be a big thick black cable, but in this instance it's not. So you have to kind of follow the cables around or get a schematic and figure out where things go. This cable needs to go into the automatic transfer switch box and then the rv power plug where you're going to splice into the system goes on this side just like that and so all we have to do now is connect these wires to the automatic transfer switch and on the plate it will tell you where everything needs to go and before we connect them we need to talk about how to mount these wires because having this kind of extension cord in this large of a hole just does not make sense. So what we do is we use these little clamp-on adapters. And these are called snap lock cable connectors. So they go into the hole and then you feed your wire through here and then you can clamp it down after you connect and terminate at these wires inside the automatic transfer switch. And so what you need to do is get the right size cable connector. This is a three fourths an inch and this can actually fit inside of this hole. Ta-da! And after you press the cable connector into the hole, you can feed your power cables in and then you can terminate it, then you can screw it down so that this will not get yanked out of the automatic transfer switch. And some of these cable connectors actually have a thread and you have to screw it down. So you just insert it into the hole and then you screw it down. And now that we have the cable connectors and the power cables fed through, now we can attach these to these wires and to the grounding bus bar. So first, because these are AC wires, we want to start with the green or the bluish green. And we want to connect these to the grounding bus bar right here. So first strip a little bit, unscrew one of these screws, put the wire into the hole, and then screw it down. And so if you actually look at the cover of the automatic transfer switch, it tells you that the terminals on the bottom are a hot and neutral for the power cord. So we've got a hot and a neutral for our RV power cord. And then on top, we have a hot and a neutral that goes to the distribution panel. So we have a hot and a neutral that go to our distribution panel. And because these are stranded wires, I like to use butt splice connectors like these. These are all going to be 10 and 12 gauge, so get the yellow ones that say 10, 12, and it's called a butt splice connector. And when working with AC, after the grounds, you want to do the neutral next. And we want to do the power cord first. So we're going to get the neutral on the power cord crimped until it looks like this. And then we're going to do the hot wire or the black one on the bottom terminal. And we're going to connect these two wires together. And now our RV power plug is completely connected so we can tighten down these cable connector screws. So tighten these down until this cable is secure and not able to move around. And also take notice of how much wire slack we have available. All of these wires that are coming in have to terminate at the grounding block or the bus bar. So it needs to be long enough to reach that. And you also want some slack so that you have room to work with. It is very hard to organize things inside of this little box and you have some movable parts in here. So you do not want wires going up into this area. So I like to keep it all down here at the bottom. Now that the converter box or the distribution panel is connected, we can screw the cable connector down. And now that these wires are connected properly, we can finally add our solar power system inverter input. So we're gonna have a power cable that goes from our solar power inverter and we're gonna connect it right here. And the big question is where should we put this power cable? If I put it in right here, 
I don't like how close it is to these contacts and I can't really move it around much. So we're gonna go from the bottom. And so on the bottom, we have two holes. And if I were to go through this one, we would have too much bending because the grounding wire would have to go over here. So I'm gonna go in from this side so there's less of a bend to the wire. And then we can feed the ground into the bus bar and we can hook up our hot and neutral and we'll be done. And so just like before, add a cable connector. So first strip this wire with one of these kinds of cable strippers and then feed the cable until the ground is on the bus bar. And so first secure your ground wire and then do the neutral. And now our solar power input is complete so we can tighten down the cable connector. And the wires may be a little bit messy but if it is not touching this switch and these cables are secured properly, you are good to go. You could actually put the cover on just like this and you will be totally fine. But always try to think about how you could improve the organization. If you can zip tie some of these power cables together or also take note of your crimp connections. If there is any conductor showing and there's vibration on the road and you have this in an RV, it could short out somewhere. So make sure you look at your wires and make sure you did a really good job. And just so that it's more organized and you can see where the wires are going, you could zip tie the neutral wires and the ground wires. Now I would personally leave the hot wires like that because they're not touching each other and I don't wanna mess with them anyways. So I think it's pretty good. I'm sure electricians watching might cringe, but this is totally fine. This will last many, many years. So we can put the cover back on. And so at the end of this power cable, you should have a male adapter and you can plug this into your solar panel power inverter. And another thing we should talk about is if you're using lithium iron phosphate batteries for your house batteries of your RV, and you do not want to use the battery charger that comes with your RV converter box. It is totally understandable and you will want to disable this. And so if you have a progressive dynamics lithium iron phosphate battery charger, what you want to do is connect it directly to here so that you bypass this entirely. So let's open this up. So let's think about this. If we get shore power, where do we want that battery charger to be connected? We want it to be connected to the shore power. So when this gets plugged in, the battery charger has power. And this is on the schematic on their website. So on this bottom terminal, you can see that there are other screws right here. Let's zoom this in real quick. There are two small screws. And so what you want to do is terminate your battery charger at those two screws and over here at the grounding block. And so that means that whenever you plug this thing into shore power, it will start charging your house batteries. So that's how you want to do it. And you'll have to do it through a different hole. Another point is grounding. So if you have an RV plug and it has a true earth ground, this ground bus bar will ground everything that's connected to it and you will have a good ground. If you have this box, in a off-grid stationary system like a cabin or a shed what you want to do is run a wire from here down to a grounding rod but it really depends on your laws and what you personally like to do but also understand that a vehicle chassis is not a true earth ground where you can dissipate excess charge so we already have everything grounded if you terminate this properly but for added protection with all ac circuits it is ideal to ground this to chassis there's lots of options depends on what you have for your code or what you prefer it depends on what you're doing if you're doing a marine battery you need to ground it for marine application that's a totally different thing and you need to make sure that that ground is perfect but for an rv grounding the chassis is great so it's a good idea to do that but it is very wise to ground to whatever you can with the proper gauge copper wire. And that's pretty much it guys. This is a super simple little box. I mean, you have three cables going into it, maybe grounding, maybe a battery charger, but it is so easy to do. I hope you guys found this video useful and please let me know if it made sense. I usually do not do AC power stuff, so please, uh, any feedback from any electricians, I would love to hear it. If there's something that you thought was completely stupid that I did, please let me know. I also have this transfer switch on my website, but there's also another one with these cables attached, but I do not like it because it doesn't have a long cable and most people want to add this to RVs and the power adapter on this side, you're still going to have to wire it anyways. So I personally like to splice it in to the RV power cable. 
But I think this video was more just to show you guys how this works and how they wire it up and how easy it is. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video and I'll talk to you later. Bye.